What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Salty Roots. Beautiful day here in Fishers, Indiana. By the way, if you're curious where the roots comes from in Salty Roots, that's gonna be much more my wife Kylie's um, area of the channel. And if you're into more of the houseplant side of things, make sure you check out our Instagram, which is Salty Roots Indy, again, over on Instagram. But in today's video, what we're going to be doing is really focusing on coral um, and quick backstory actually in regards to what you'll hear first on the video um, you know some some disappointing news with a lot of coral death and that actually came um, right after I moved the display into the fish room um, and plugged it all in and essentially long story short I lost power um, to that tank and so it was pretty cold overnight and um, it resulted in a bit of death so you know between moving the tank in general um, you know just disrupting the corals in that way as well as you know losing power and heat and just all of that I had quite a bit of death so you'll hear about that in the start of the video all that and more to come here in this video I appreciate you again stopping by make sure you hit the like button subscribe um, comment any questions and hit the bell notification so you know when the next video is coming out um, the one after this actually is going to be some fish updates so another good one that i hope um you know everyone will enjoy watching so again thanks for stopping by and let's jump in Yeah, really starting to go downhill quick here. Green Slimer, very hardy coral. Just barely hanging on. Monty, completely dead. That's just a tiny frag of Forest Fire Digi, also usually pretty hardy, dead. A big colony of Digi, barely hanging on. Um, on death's doorstep for sure. Uh, really upset about that one right there. Um, that's a PC rainbow, completely dead. So, gotta get this figured out quick. So I was able to get things back under control. As with anything in this hobby, stability is key. So really once I got the, the temperature back and you know things settled in, I just left it alone. And um, as you will see, everything started to open back up, which is great. All right, so we're getting things back on track. That guy looks really good. As always, the tank of frog spawn doing well, but everything's opening back up. Um, opening back up the green slimer is looking rough on top, but I think it's going to pull through. The bottom's showing some signs. Back there, that random uh, stick is completely dead. The large digitata polyps are hanging on just barely. They're starting to poke out a little bit. I have some hope. It's of course looking pretty rough, but Hoping that I'll pull through. Bird's nest actually looks pretty well. That's just a frag of the digi. If I lose the big colony, hopefully one of the little guys will make it through. Stylophora is starting to have some polyp extension, so that's great. One of the first things I wanna do is go ahead and unplug my ATO because as I'm taking water out of the tank um, to dip these corals, of course the water level is gonna go down and I don't want it feeding a bunch of fresh water to replace the salt water I'm taking out. And then of course, bring down my overall salinity in the display. So I do, let's see, I'm gonna do one gallon just because these are some bigger acro pieces that I got. I wanna make sure they fit into the tank here. So I'll of course have to replace a gallon of salt water in the display. I'll probably do that first so the system doesn't get out of whack. All right, so there's a gallon. Let's go ahead and throw in some salt water. All right, now you use Coral RX. Um, pretty simple and pretty um, well-reviewed coral dip. So it says to shake the bottle. And then for one gallon of salt water, you wanna add four capfuls. I have 
some tools I specifically use for new corals just because they're exposed to the coral dip. I only use them for this. I just have this baster here that I mix up the uh, dip with. You pretty much want some constant uh, movement in the bucket as the coral's in there. A lot of people will put a power head in there. I just kind of use the baster to swirl it around and kind of blast um, the coral with the dip once it's in there. I also like to get a couple of uh, additional buckets or uh, a couple of additional bowls uh, with fresh salt water that way. Once it goes through the dip, it can sit in some fresh salt water to rinse off that dip prior to going into the display. Alright, so we'll grab our first coral here. A really nice size bird's nest, um, the one with the pink tips. And these corals both came from Jeremy down at Modern Aquatics. So we'll get him in there. This guy's just a general acro here. Um, pretty decent size as well. In there as well. So again, I just like to swirl the water around. Um, let's see, the directions say five to 10 minutes. So I'll look at the clock here, five to 10 minutes, and generally, you know, every few minutes, swirl it around, blast the corals with the baster. Just make sure there's movement in there. Something like a bird's nest with so many um, branches, you really wanna make sure you baste um, with your tool um, as much as you can to really try to blast all those spots of potential pests. One last blast here. Yeah. Baster. Swirl them around a little bit. And then we'll put them in the fresh salt water. As is usually the case with anything from Jeremy at Modern Aquatics, really nothing in here. There's uh, like a tiny bristle worm, really not seeing anything else, but nevertheless, always good practice, of course, to dip every coral. Um, so we'll let them sit here in the fresh salt water for a little bit, and then we'll get them into the tank. All right, so I'll take this guy out of the fresh salt water. There's still a light kind of swish. Careful, don't want to make any incidental frags already. We'll take a look at the display. Actually, right up here. Ooh, that's a nice spot. This is dying anyway. Uh, here. Place. Oh, we're gonna have to put this guy in a frag club. Cue disappointing music. Just when everything starts to look good again, um, I have an ALK swing just because I have a family of, I have the family of Neptune products with the Apex, the Dose, and the Trident, and I was, uh, you know, messing around with the automatic dosing, and it ended up with an ALK. It uh, resulted in an ALK swing, which uh, pretty much killed everything, as you'll, you'll see here. Out now, but as you can see, this bird's nest um, has completely died, I'm trying to save at least a few little tiny pieces that still are clinging to some life here. Um, now that I got the alkalinity back under control. But anyway, when I was fragging this, or at least taking a couple of pieces off, which who knows if they'll survive or not, I did notice a little hitchhiker in here. Where'd you go? There he is. So if you can see in there, there's a little crab living in this coral. And he's actually not a pest. Um, these crabs that live in these corals um, actually have a symbiotic relationship with the colony where they will help the coral out, um, eat you know, various pests and um, you know, keep the coral clean. And the coral, of course, protects it. And so if you ever see one of these, before you throw the coral out, try to grab that little guy and put him back in the tank, which is what we're gonna do. Just going 
deeper into the coral as expected. There he is. replaced my big pink bird's nest colony that died um, with a new one. He had essentially the um, same size colony for the same price that I paid for that other one. So very uh, lucky there that we get to replace that. And then he had some possible Pora, um, $15 for the piece that I'll show you. Um, as said, you know, you cannot beat Jeremy's prices at Modern Aquatics. So I will uh, get those out, we'll dip them here, and then we'll add them to the display deck. Okay, first up we have the possible Pora. This is my possible port piece I got from Jeremy for $15. I mean, you're seeing SPS these days be like one stick, you know, for, I mean, even though it's a common coral, you're seeing those online and other places be, I don't know, 50 plus, it's 15 bucks for that. We have our big bird's nest piece here that they had to bag like seven times. It kept leaking, so this is probably gonna take me a minute to get out. So I appreciate them. Making sure it didn't leak on me. It's about 25 minute drive without traffic, but it's carb day here in Indianapolis, so to get down towards the south side from Fishers, it's quite a bit of traffic. <laughs> This this bag's had plenty of water, but we don't have to add anything extra, so we'll just use this water and dip them. But and you can see the size of it in my hand here. 60 bucks. I mean, granted, it's just a pink bird's nest, so it's nothing, you know, too crazy, but it's a colony this size, I feel like anywhere else is going to be a couple hundred dollars at least, if not more. So, 60 bucks. Shout out to Jeremy, Modern Aquatics. This is Jack. You will see him in many of my videos. He Always wants to see what I'm doing. His name's Jack Tiberius Burns. If you've ever seen me parrots, the Robert De Niro's character, one of my favorite characters of all time. know what this guy is. Looks like he has some pinchers. Let me get a better shot for you. Oh, he's flying all oh no, he just lost one of his pinchers. So the coral dip did do this guy in. Um, again, I'm not sure what that is. I'm sure many of you do. I don't think it's anything too crazy. Um, so if you know what that is, let me know in the comments. I did notice the other day um, some flatworms in my display. First time I've ever seen flatworms in any of my tanks before. Um, so I promptly went out and got a six line wrass um, because they're known to eat the flatworms. They're doing a pretty good job. And I was listening to a podcast today, a Bulletproof Supply podcast with Brian and Elliot, and they were saying, you know, um, just talking about general good practices and, you know, encouraging, of course, to dip all orals and, you know, 
they were saying to quarantine corals. I personally choose not to do that. Um, it's more time and effort that I'm willing to spend. Um, but I would recommend if you have you know, the ability to do that, do that, but most people don't. Anyway, point is, they were just talking about this topic um, where even though you already have pests or even though you, know, you already have ick present or you've seen ick or whatever the pests may be, still quarantine, still dip, um, you know, because there's so many other pests and things that can then get into the tank that you want, don't want to add in addition to whatever you may already have. So like kind of the general line of thinking was, well, I already have it, so why quarantine this tank? This fish, well, that fish may have flukes, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, I already have flatworms, so why even, um, you know, dip these? They could have red bugs. So um, even if you already have something present in your tank that's not ideal, still practice, you know, still do, uh, you know, good practices and dip and quarantine as much as you can. Um, it's just gonna save you, you know, make in the long run. You don't want multiple problems building up in the tank to the point where it just drives you to shut, shut it down. So. It's going to contrast in that um, on the red digitata back there. So the bright red and the green. That digitata actually survived the aux swing barely, but he's coming back. So all a nice bright red against a bright green right up front. And then over here, um, this tiny little guy, it's kind of hard to see, is a uh, green slimer that also um, was a lot bigger, but it seems to somewhat have survived the aux swing. Um, I'd had to take most of it off, but um, this bottom piece here seems to be coming back. So we're in good shape. So thanks again for checking out the video. Hopefully you enjoyed learning a little bit more about my corals. As I had said, the next video will be more focused on the fish, um, current fish, and what I plan on putting in these additional tanks in the fish room. So you don't want to miss that one. Make sure you click the bell notification so you know when it comes out. Like, comment, and subscribe. Till next time.